When I was 10 years old, in March 1964, I witnessed Polly Antonio Cruz, Anthony Aperon, molest an auto boy. I was also an auto boy at that time. During the Len week, about eight of us were rehearsing for the high Latin mass service, which was very difficult service. These were the masses for the Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter services. The Mass at that time was spoken in Latin. When we finished late one night, and Polly Cruz asked us to spend the night, so we did. We all slept in the rector, rector, rectory on the second floor where Polly Cruz lives. We slept on the living room floor, which is right outside his bedroom. Polly Cruz told us the door would be open if we needed to use the restroom. The restroom was located in Polly Cruz's bedroom. I woke up late in the night to use the restroom. When I entered Polly Cruz's bedroom, I saw Polly Cruz laying in bed naked. One of the altar boy was on bed, the bed naked. He was laying on his side and sucking Polly Cruz's penis. I also saw a pro kneeling on the floor facing the altar boy, sucking the altar boy's penis. The altar boy was my age, 10 years old at the time. I looked away and continued towards the restroom. Aperon got up and followed me and placed his arm around my shoulder. At that time, Tomas, my older brother, suddenly appeared directly behind Aperon and asked me, are you okay? I said to Tomas, in tomorrow, yes. I needed to get out of here and push my way out of the room. Tomas was right behind me the whole way home. When we got home, I said to Tomas, did you see what I saw? Tomas says, yes, let's sleep. We'll talk about it tomorrow. The following morning, he asked me if I was okay. He and I never spoke about what we saw again because he didn't want to talk about it. Aperon was a seminar at that time. I remember seeing Aperon coming in the church many times, walking past the classes, walking upstairs to Polly Cruz's room when I was attending Escuela and Polly. I also remember that he was always driving a blue Corvair. About two to three months later, I was walking to the old bus station by the edge of the church parking lot. As I approached the church, Polly Cruz stuck his head out of the second floor bathroom window and said, I, need, I needed your help. I climbed the staircase and opened the door. As I looked inside, I saw Polly Cruz sitting to what to be up here, a loft seat, masturbating as he asked me to come into the room. I said, no. I'm late for school, I have to catch the bus. Polly Cruz asked me then to grab some money on the table from the limosna. I said no and immediately left. Eventually after school, I told my mom. She said, I'll take care of this. Years later, after talking to, to my sister, I, told my, I was told that this reason why my mother started constantly following us when we were to close the church at 7 p.m. About two weeks after the incident, I was passing the social hall, the church social hall. Polly Cruz asked me if I could help him catch two chickens that got loose. While I was trying to catch a chicken, I noticed Polly Cruz masturbating in the chicken coop. I immediately left without saying a word, and I stopped being an altar boy not too long after that. I am coming forward today because not only the altar boys from Agat, Barragada, Manila, abused, altar boys in Chalampago were also abused by Polly Antonio Cruz and Aperon, Anthony Aperon. I am also doing this for my grandmother. She was a machacha for the Polly, Polly Cruz and two other pastors before him. She suddenly quit Polly Cruz during Polly Cruz's time because I believe that she saw or saw something that made her quit. I know of others that I pray they come forward and tell their stories. 
so we could all heal, lift this heavy burden from our soul. So when you first heard of the other victims, first Roy coming out, and then Walter, and Roland, and Miss, and Miss, and Miss Doris, what were your thoughts? Had you known about their cases before? No, but uh, uh, no, it just, you know, brought me back to the past. What had happened to me, and I could see what, you know, the other Alta Boys and Child and Pog, to what they saw or what they, or they might be molested. molested. So it was through the news that you, through watching the news? Yes, I, keep, I, I was keeping touch on the news and everything, just constantly listening to it, what was happening and everything. And at this point, is this where you thought, I'm not alone? Oh, uh, when I, basically when they came out regarding Barragada and Manila, and I just, I tried to talk to some of the altar boys, but, you know, I don't want to force the issue or whatever, but I, I, was, I told them I was coming out to include my brother. Speaking of your brother, was he ever a victim? Uh, we never talked about that. I never asked him, he never asked me. Uh, but uh, even with the incident that night and everything, uh, I, that's why I kind of didn't say, I was nervous, confused. I didn't say anything to my mother and father, but my brother knew. So I felt secure with my brother. How much older is your brother? Just a year. Just a year? So he's 63? Uh, years old. And you said you, you told your mother, you told your mom, and is she still alive today? No, my mom's right. Has she been alive today, or what was, what was your, her initial reaction though, besides I'll take care of this? Uh, I think my mom sensed it because of my grandmother. And she's been hearing things, what was happening. But then, you know, her way was to more follow us when we were closing the church. We, because three of my, my three other brothers, to include myself, we were always closing the church at that time at 7 p.m. So my mom finally said, I guess that's her way to watch over us, it was falling right behind us. Where is Polly Cruz today? He's deceased. Do you know what year he passed away? No, I never. I uh, joined Sir when I left Guam and everything. I was gone for 20 years. Oh, okay. gone for 20 years. When did you return to Guam? 19, May 1995. 1995? The reason why I know you're coming out in just this particular timing, right, is very important. Bill 326 is being discussed by senators right now. Should it pass into law and lift the statute of limitations for child sex abuse cases, would you consider going after APRA? Well, I, I'm, I never thought of, you know, pursuing anything. I, I, I'm actually doing this for my mother, and especially my grandmother. My grandmother worked at the Machado wash their clothes, iron their clothes, make uh, lunch, breakfast for them. And, you know, I basically came out to just be, before, for my grandmother, just not just the Alta boys. Do you think that Pale Cruz had a certain kind of boy he was looking for, or there are certain targets, or? Uh, I believe the ages, because when I'm listening to the, what's occurring and everything, the, the age is almost, I'm 10 years old back then. And maybe to uh, some of the guys that are like feminine, the boys, because I think that's how they target their, you know, the guys or the victims. Okay. How many altar boys were there? That night when we practiced, I said eight. You but uh, when we overnight, we were like six. Did you ever have issues with sleeping over at the priest's house, at the rectory? Just or that, just that night, just that time. That's the first time we ever tried to sleep, uh, spend overnight. And that was the first and last time? First and last time. The boy that you, wit that you witnessed with, in the sexual acts with the priest, is he alive today? No, he's deceased too. Okay. Was he was also ten? You said right. He was only ten years old. Did he stay an altar boy 
much long after the incident? Uh, I'm not too sure. He was still an altar boy back then and, uh, because they used to alter our schedule, when to serve and not to serve. So, but uh, communication-wise, uh, I spoke to him. I never asked or questioned him, but you know, just because uh, we were classmates in school and everything. From what you saw that night when you slept over, did the boy look like he was resistant, like he was being forced? Did you observe any of maybe his facial expressions? No, I didn't see his face because he's uh, he was up in the priest, and uh, all I saw was the priest's hand behind his head. When you when you were catching the, trying to catch the chickens and you realized what was happening, how did you feel? It's like it's reoccurring again, you know. I think he stands there and waits for people to go, uh, kids to go by. So it happened on just one occasion for yourself, or twice, once or twice. 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 The first time he tried to get you to do something for him, right? Come up, yes. And then the second time was when you were catching the chicken. Yes. So only one time that you're really aware that he was masturbating to you. No, twice. Twice, two times, okay. When I went up the staircase the okay. first time. Okay. Because he was naked. Do you have any, do you speak with any, I mean, you say you were speaking with some of the altar boys? Yeah, I spoke uh, to two of the guys, you know, previous and uh, they, they're, I don't know, they, they just, like, they don't want to come forward. I, you know, I don't blame them, you know, maybe the embarrassment and everything, but uh, uh, I tried, just like my brother, I don't want to force him because my, my brother suffered a stroke and he's just, re, uh, right now he's uh, rehabilitating and everything. I tried to talk to him, but uh, I just want, I don't want to force the issue with him. He, he's still sick. All the other victims mentioned how how the incidents have scarred them for life. So this is what fifty years, over fifty years since it happened. Has it affected your life? Yes, it does because, uh, especially, uh, I work down at Navy, and the route I always take is going past Chalon Park. I always, you know, I look up uh, where I used to stay, say hi, mom, and my brothers, and then I look at the church and. First thing I see is that staircase, and it, you know memories right there. Just and I, I just do because you know when I pass the church, I do the sign of the cross, and just, and it's already you know I as a Catholic, it's I was brought up that way. You pass the church, you do the sign of the cross. Have you returned to Chalampago Parish since you stopped being an altar boy? No, uh, well, the last time I've ever well the. Twice I, when my father passed away, because he, you know, the church, and then my mom, and nothing after that. How has this affected your, your faith? Uh, it's not the faith, it's the individual that, you know, it's not the Catholic Church or the faith, it's the individual that caused this problem. And this needs to be, you know, the people in Chalim Park need to know that this thing happened, not just in Baragada, Manila, or Agat, and it happened. And I know there was quite, there's quite a few altar boys before me, my age, and you know after uh, younger that were they probably seen, and I know they were abused. If Polly Cruz was alive today, what would you say to him? You did bad. You did bad things to us. You, you did something wrong, real wrong, to be a priest, to do what you did. And it hurts. And especially like my grandmother, you know. My grandmother went to two priests before him. She just got up and left. And it hurts. So again, you suspect that your grandmother knew, right? My grandmother saw something. Anything else you'd like to add? that I may not have asked? No, again, if uh, the altar boys from Chalampago, please have the courage, come up and say something, let's heal. And that's all I have to say.